We've got ourselves a new weapon pack to tuck into here, and when you successfully land a special attack on an enemy, you'll pick up a frost explosion from your weapon, where ice shards will also rain down from the sky to do additional damage. Now, all of these weapons are part of the new frost serpent pack that has been found in the game files by Pedder, meaning that we don't yet know when it's going to be released, but it should be arriving in the Helix store within the next 30 days. But let's kick off this no-nonsense breakdown with the dagger first. It's called the Ormir Tooth, Ormir meaning serpent in Old Norse, with the dagger also being described as being crafted from a large snake that has been frozen under the ice so there we are but when it comes to stats frost builds up on a special attack which is then thrown as ice shards on a special attack finisher with the number of ice shards dependent upon the amount of stacks that you've built up the max being five with a cooldown of 10 seconds and let's see this in action here because it does sound quite confusing but once you trigger your special attack which if you didn't know is just holding down your parry button in combat you'll then be able to see your stack build up just above your toolbar and when it does fill up after utilizing your special attacks that's when the shards will proc but only after you use another special attack move which is then when you're going to see that animation so there's a few dance steps here hopefully that's making sense but this mechanic is applicable to all other weapons in this pack in terms of frost build-up requirements by the way as it is essentially a prerequisite that needs to be fulfilled before you get your frosty reign of death so do bear that in mind if you're wondering why you haven't conjured your ice storm on the basis that you decide to pull the trigger on this pack when it does arrive in game now moving on to our one-handed axe called the Kalastunga, which i think is the best looking weapon out of the whole set to be honest with you from a fantasy point of view as it's noted as being made of solid ice stained with the blood of its foes which certainly looks to be the case here however when it does come to triggering your ice rain animation you'll need to build that frost energy up by hitting repeated light attacks to then release them all with a heavy finisher now this can be used in the middle of combat but it is quite counterintuitive to be honest with you as nine times out of 10 when you actually reach the end of a melee combo and are dropping heavy finishes the NPC is usually going to die so as you can see here your ice shards are doing absolutely no damage to an already dead enemy which isn't ideal. Cosmetically though the detail on the snake that's wrapped around the hill is solid in my opinion especially if you like this art style and aesthetic. Now before we move on to the next two weapons if you have found this breakdown informative so far please do leave a very quick like down below it only takes two ticks and it genuinely really helps me out on YouTube so thank you very much you absolute legend. Now let's talk about a great sword. It's called the Frostbiter, which looks like it's been pulled straight out of the realm of Niflheim. And apart from the difference in weapon and cosmetic changes, Frost Power once again builds up through generic melee hits in combat, which is then released on a finisher move. Now, just like its weapon pack counterparts, there isn't much point in the ice shards if the NPC is already dead. But do remember that this is a helix pack in bound, so you don't want the best stats frozen in a pay-to-win orientated mechanic. So do bear that in mind as well. However, when it comes to its appearance, I do prefer my more grounded and realistic weapons but I think the designers have done a good job on genuinely making it look like a deadly greatsword that has been fashioned from ice so top marks there. Now greatsword aside we've got a new spear here called the Tivindara and apologies for the rogue pronunciation but it is described as being crafted by twisting frozen snakes together and even though this weapon is not for me personally spears are still the very best weapons in the game by far so this would be a solid transmog option if you do have spears equipped and like the art direction of this one in particular. Stats though, you build up your frost energy again, but this time with standard melee hits and then unleash it through a special attack, which will thrust your spear forward, subsequently impaling the enemy, causing a fog of frost to appear, as well as those ice shards plummeting from the sky. Now, if you weren't aware, Ubisoft are celebrating 15 years of Assassin's Creed over the next couple months with celebrations of their AAA games occurring every week, which you can see here from their official roadmap. They went on to say that they will be announcing the future of Assassin's Creed soon through a special event in September, which we can only assume is is Ubisoft forward on September the 10th unless it's a separate event entirely and that's when I think that we're going to be picking up this new AC15 tattoo set for Eivor in Valhalla and let me tell you I am very keen to hear your thoughts and opinions on this one in particular down below in the comments you're going to have to let me know what you think of it but we also have some new settlement cosmetics which I don't think look too bad to be fair especially the gold AC statue which I'm picking up very old school assassin centric vibes from I think it looks decent and on top of that we do have the Edward Wood Kenway legacy outfit coming to Valhalla which Pedder found in the game files before anyone else months ago and which we now have the visuals for in the game files. Now Ubisoft have said that it will be arriving in September as well with no specific date again so I think that we're going to pick these all up on September the 10th at Ubisoft Forward but we're just going to have to wait and see. So if you would like to stay up to date with all Assassin's Creed content and news and you enjoy these first look videos make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done so so you can find your way back here easily. Some 
some more interesting stuff to talk about soon, including a potential Black Flag remaster. And these type of videos are only possible thanks to Pedder, Nika, and Jabak and Donut, who put in a lot of work for us behind the scenes. So our thanks to them, and please do leave a like on the video to show your support. Anyway, as usual, coffee is on me, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.